guys go ahead and turn to Romans 10. We're going to read a passage here, and then I'm going to... Uh, I know not everyone's going to Rome, but I know uh, most of you have gone on a short-term mission trip with us and will go on more into the future. And so I wanted to just charge you guys with a few things as you prepare for the short-term trip as we leave to London. My family leaves to London this Wednesday and won't be back to the end of June. So I want to just go ahead and charge everyone with this last remaining things that we need to take care of before we leave. Uh, but we'll be doing more missions. This is the heartbeat of our church is who we are. And so Romans 10, it's very fitting as we go. Uh, It says, starting in verse eight, it says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Talked about that in the last couple of weeks in the Gospel of Mark, that we need both. It's both a confession with our mouth, a public confession, usually is done during, in, during baptism, but really every day as we live our lives before people. But also it is a, a belief in the heart. And so it says here in verse 11, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. You'll never regret, I think, at the end of your life that you gave your life to Jesus. That's not going to be a regret, right? You're going to wish you had more of Jesus or wish you had lived more righteous life or those kinds of things. But no one's going to be like, man, I, I think I made the wrong choice. And so you'll never be disappointed. Any person, any man or woman who puts their faith in Jesus Christ will never be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord is the Lord of all, abounding in riches, forever who call, whoever calls on him, and whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you know what? I, I, we didn't have time to go through that if you were with us when I taught on Romans 9. It's a, you need to balance it out with Romans 10. I mean, it's, the fact is God is sovereign in salvation. But the reality is if you're sitting there and you're like, I want to be saved, then call on the name of the Lord. Just call on the name of the Lord in faith and trust him alone and you'll be saved. And then verse 14, how then will they call on him whom they've not believed? And how will they believe in him whom they've not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. There's... I've heard one pastor say there's going to be a a beauty contest in heaven and that's going to be determined in how well you've shared the gospel. And uh, and yeah, I I don't think he literally means, I mean, because imagine those people at that time that were in sandals and and dirt and, but how beautiful are the feet, the people who are going to go to Rome this summer and share the gospel for six weeks or 10 days. It's going to be an amazing time. And God's already been stirring. This is a natural thing. My wife's like, just, honey, I'm trying to go to London and you're talking about 2024. Can we just go to bed? These are the normal things that happen in our household. Uh, I can't help it, but um, the Lord has been putting America on my heart more and more in the last two or three years. And uh, I just can't get it out of my, I can't shake it. I I don't know how to explain that. It's just the same feeling I've had for the last 10 years is when we were praying to go to these nations whether it was Ecuador in the jungles or in Colombia for a number of years straight and raising up a church there or Japan or Sweden or Belgium or Amsterdam, France. I mean, you name it, we've been all over. But the reality is our nation needs this gospel. I think I realize that more and more as I've been thinking about uh, whether your parents um, (laughs) or your siblings or people like yourself even have come up to me and said, what about Orlando? I mean, what about Orlando? And what about, what about America? They need the gospel. Well, hey, you're going to get your chance. You're going to, and then they'll be saying, well, what about the world? <laughs> what about the world? It's just human nature, isn't it? But as I've been praying, uh, we really need to invest in our city even more. I mean, we're doing it multiple times a week. We're on our campus sharing the gospel. We're, we're in our city. Um, I would encourage you guys 
to, I mean, it's, we're long past the signups for Rome. We're all going to Rome. We're gonna, we're, that's a done deal. We're going. And when we come back, there's an opportunity for you guys to invest in our own city and our kids in the next generation. Um, I, I'm investing in my kids in the next generation. You need to invest in your kids and in the kids of this city. And uh, I just got off the plane from Dallas, Texas. I was there for 24 hours. Uh, I, I, any chance I get to go to the Creation Museum in Dallas or the Creation Museum in Cincinnati, I get that chance. And I, I, I'm wanting to at least go twice a year and bring back the goods and bring back what's going, up the, uh, what's going on out there or up there because it is so important for this generation to understand Genesis 1 through 11. You don't understand Genesis 1 through 11, you're gonna have a hard time reading the rest of your Bible. If you don't understand Romans 1, you're gonna have a hard time understanding why the gospel is as important as it is. It is extremely important that you understand Genesis 1 through 11 and Romans 1. You'll understand the whole Bible if you understand that. It is so important to understand these things. I, I, I feel like, I, I mean, I could go there once a month just to get their lectures. I heard somebody saying, this was, this was Earth Day. They, they uh, <laughs> can you imagine? The amount of propaganda I got in the last two days, I don't know about you, I don't even have social media, and it was just in my face. I mean, I was just listening to like Spotify, and boom, pops up, save the planet. Look, God didn't call us to save the planet. He called us to make disciples. He didn't call us to, to get all into this green stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. We know what 2 Peter 3 says. It's going to blow up one day for the glory of God and so that he could create a new earth, a new heavens, a new earth. So you could tell every propaganda, every green person, every liberal out there that the world, the, it, it, literally, we cannot destroy the earth. We are not going to destroy the earth. God is going to destroy the earth just as he did in Genesis 5 with a flood. He's going to do that in 2 Peter at the, end of the, at the end of age. He's going to torch it. And so there's no possible way we're getting out of this. Jesus is the only way to a new heaven and a new earth. I mean, I don't even have social media. I'm bombarded. I mean, I just go to Google just to type in what the Dallas weather is, and I get propaganda. It's crazy. And most of the college students in this room is, are brainwashed from the college that you go to. I love the college campus. I'm on college campus all the time sharing the gospel. We're there all the time. But nonetheless, there is a lot of brainwashing that's happened and I, I think it would behoove you to go up to these places, either to Cincinnati or Dallas, or get online, subscription to their magazine they have month. I mean, you can go to town on this stuff, but it's incredible. I just, I, we just got back from the conference, and one of the things we were just telling our friends behind us, they said that there's a professor that's saying, I think it's in a third world country, that's saying that they want their people to start eating bugs because eating rice is bad for the environment. And they would get extra credit for eating bugs during the semester. Togwash, it's stupid. It's just, it, I, I, people are starving and you're gonna tell people that? What in the world's going on? It is important to understand what the gospel says and what the Bible says in Genesis 8, it, it, we're just going to go from season to season to season to season to season. You could throw your trash in whatever bucket you want, and it is going to, it is, will not matter at all. I, I tell you, I promise you, continue to throw whatever bucket you want, and I guarantee you, you will not bring Jesus back sooner, and you will not see this earth destroyed. So you have to know what the Bible says. Uh, and if you're new, I'm so sorry to offend you, but I really don't care if you know me. <laughs> I just, I, I preach the Bible. I'm a truth teller. And so it just, this is what the Bible says. And it would be important for you to raise your kids in this manner um, because you want to have your kids growing up in a household where mom and dad know what the Bible says. Uh, and they're not freaked out what's going on in the environment but they're more concerned about the heart environment than what's going out in the planet. Amen? So we need Jesus. I'm thankful we're going to Rome. 
But stay tuned. I think we're going to do some sort of American tour or something like that probably in 2024 because we really need to bring, bring the gospel to the four corners of this map right here in the United States of America. I love this country. And, you know, we don't have to be political and all that kind of stuff. We could just say we love this country. Why wouldn't you? Why would you? As a Christian, to hate your country is foolishness. And I think we, we, need, we need to focus our efforts right here in our own backyard. I've never noticed, I think because of all the travel I've done and even the last few years, even during the pandemic and even during this time, just watching people interact with their kids or watching people what they say or just watching even what's going on in the world and news and in this own country, I, I feel like I've just had more and more of a burden for what's going on here. I, I think I've realized, I think I could actually say with my own heart, I think I love the people in my own country, just as like what Paul was saying in Romans 9, just saying, you know, I, I'd, I'd go to hell so that you could go to heaven. I don't think I'm there yet to that extreme like Paul, but he loved his people so much. I don't think I've ever loved a people, you know, I mean, as far as like a, you know, a nation, you know, people you always weep at these world, world vision or world mandate conferences and whatnot. It's like, oh man, this would be so awesome to go to this place, that place. I think more and more I realize that for our own backyard and for our own places, own states here in this country. And so I, I want you guys to pray when you get back from Rome, to pray through, uh, you know, different places where we would go and, and, and such. And of course, we don't, we're, it's not like we're not going to the nations. We are always gonna go to the nations. Acts 1-8 is very clear. And we, that's, that's our mandate. The common denominator for our church is we are a missional people. That's the most important. That's the bullseye, and it always has been the bullseye. It always will be the bullseye. And that's what you need to concern yourself with. And read Romans 9 and 10. Familiar, familiarize yourself with those passages. It's very important that you do that. Um, but here's, here's a couple of things. I know this is a little long, uh, but th you'll get your, you know, everything you need f for the next two months uh, here. So... Um, if you're gonna take notes, I think this is good just for, for in general, for a mission trip. But number one, be focused on God's glory. Like I said, the bullseye is missions. That's who we are. We're a missional people. We've gotta concern ourselves with God's glory. What will bring God the most glory as we pray through the different places we go, but also as we just prepare to, uh, as Mike, is, Mike Pabone is preparing to uh, launch a ministry, I actually launched it last year, uh, to our people uh, here in our own backyard for, for our kids. And this is a great opportunity for you guys to get these kids the gospel and to, to read the Bible to them. And this is a wide open door. We know our mayor. She's a believer. We have a great relationship with her uh, for the last so many years, actually. And I'm just thankful for the opportunities that we have. Please sign up for that basketball program. It is just an easy, I know a lot of you guys, it's just roams on your mind. I get that but just sign up for it. You'll, you'll be thankful that when you come home, because we're gonna have a longer summer this year. This is gonna be a long, you know, when we went to San Francisco, it was mid-June, mid to end of June. And we'll be back and ready. We'll have a, a longer summer uh, and it'll, it'll be well worth actually putting uh, you guys to use or to good work and sharing the gospel with people in our city. And then, uh, so focus on God's glory, the big, the big picture is we're missional people. Number two is be humble and patient, remembering that Jesus uh, humbled himself and went to earth, from heaven to earth. Uh, these are hard places. As, uh, if you can imagine, it's him as a missionary. I mean, he came as a missionary. This is hard for him. This was Philippians 2, if you read that passage. He gave himself up for us uh, by doing the hard work of coming and dying for us. Um, we need to... Uh, by being humble, we need to defer to the local pastors. It's not, it's not about us. It's not about people serving the American church as we go to different places. It's about us serving them and always coming in saying, how can we serve? How can we serve? How can we serve? Um, I, I got a text message the other day from the guy, one of the pastors in Italy because we're working with a few churches there. And I, I had said this to our team. I said, you know, I, I just, I have a feeling, I don't know what it is, but I just sense that they don't, I think they don't think we're serious yet. And, and uh, sure enough, you know, they, they send a text. After two trips, I mean, we spent all this money to go there two times. And uh, when we saw them in California, I guess it's three trips that we've gone to see them. But uh, I just got a text like two days ago saying, hey, are you guys still coming? 
I'm just curious if you guys are still coming. Yes. Like, <laughs> didn't even know how to respond to that. But <laughs> said, yes, we are coming. <laughs> He's like, oh, good. Because uh, I was wondering if you guys could pass out some stuff for us. I was like, sure. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's kind of what we do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll pass whatever you need out. Uh, and so, anyways, um, number three, spend yourself. The jet lag and the culture and the new landscape, it's going to be difficult. Weather, the weather, I mean, all those things, the elements, they're, they're, they're challenging. But just know that when you're weary, just say this to yourself. The gospel is worth it. This is where God's called us to. He's definitely um, confirmed that multiple, multiple times. And, and then be flexible, a little flexi finger thing that we used to always do, Right. I mean, just plans change all the time. And again, that just is a reminder that it's not about us. Be a learner. Ask questions. Don't assume that you know everything. Um, you don't know everything. Our leaders do not know everything. We're constantly asking questions too as well. It's, uh, and then be encouraging, not only to your team. We've talked about that at our team culture meeting. But, the, but also be encouraging to them in two areas specifically, whether you're here in the States or overseas, that God is always good and that he is sovereign. That is an encouraging message, especially in our world today. Be low maintenance. Um, It's hard uh, for all of us, isn't it? But don't fall into the tourist trap. I think this is the biggest thing is just don't fall into the tourist trap that, you know, come and serve me uh, mindset and like I had mentioned earlier. So let's be faithful with Rome, guys, and let's be praying where God would lead us in the next coming years and so, uh, if anything, for sure, pray for our country. Uh, our country needs our prayers. We're not in good shape. So we, we do need to, I sense that very, very strongly. And I've been praying for this and talking to many of our leaders for quite some time now. This has been on my heart for a while. So, so you guys could do that. And then um, why don't we stand to our feet and pray for Rome and pray that we would live out these principles And that uh, we would also pray for our, our own people here this summer.